Senator from Florida. Madam President, I don't want to take a moment to, to speak on, on my amendment, and I won't take very long. Um, first of all, really, my comments are geared towards somebody who might be watching or maybe watch a video of this later, because usually when there aren't a lot of mysteries here in the Florida, in the, in the floor of the Senate, and when, you, uh, when, when these amendments come up, everybody kind of knows the way it's going to go, and, and this amendment that I'm about to put forward here is probably not going to pass. I'm pretty certain it won't, or it wouldn't, we wouldn't have gotten a vote on it. So. Um, that's just the way it is. But that's okay because it's not okay, but it's okay in the sense that I still want to take this opportunity to talk about this and have a vote on it. Let me just say this. If you go back two, three years, I believe, not the first, one of the first people here that talked about the need to do what much of this bill does was me. I've been talking now for two or three years about the need for the American government to step forward and partner with the private sector. I've been talking about the need for industrial policy. You can't compete with a nation state if the nation state is not involved in the competition. And that's what we're involved in, a nation state competition. And it does involve a massive amount of Chinese investment in research and development. And we've got to step up to the plate. The days of believing that on some of these items, the private market on its own will solve it, it's not possible at this scale and scope. I point to Operation Warp Speed. Would the private market have eventually given us a vaccine? It would have, but we needed it now. And we stepped forward, we provided the money, the private sector responded, and today we're standing around here with no masks on, and much of the country is getting back to normal because we have vaccines. You could criticize a lot of things about what America did in the, after, in the beginnings of the pandemic, but we've done vaccines better than anyone in the world, and that would not have been possible without industrial policy, which is the partnership of government and business to solve an urgent crisis of national concern. Well, when it comes to research, development, technology, that's perhaps the single greatest uh, requirement before us today in terms of the future. The 21st century is going to be defined by this definition between China and the, between the, this competition between China and the United States. And it's a competition we simply cannot win unless we step forward and match it. But another part of the Chinese approach to this is not simply to invest, but to steal. As many of you know, I've been on the Intelligence Committee now for 10 years. I was the vice chairman, acting vice chair, uh, acting chairman of it for a number of months, and now the vice chairman in a committee that I think, maybe I'm prejudiced in this view, but I think it's uh, the best uh, functioning committee here. I'm sure some would disagree, but um, but w I think we do a lot of good work. And it comes on this topic, and I spend a lot of time reading all the intelligence every single day. Let me just describe my experiences over the last year and a half. It's a horror show. The Chinese are stealing our intellectual property. And it's not just, oh, they reverse engineer someone's software. They steal the money that taxpayers are investing in basic research and development. We have a graph here. I have it up. The print is too small to see on camera, but I'll describe it to you. Here's how they operate use our universities. Okay? They prioritize, they steal priority technologies, leverage international openness of U.S. markets, universities, and institutes. They place scientists, researchers, and universities, U.S. national labs for access to emerging and foundational research and access to dual-use export control technologies. It goes on to say, Chinese state-owned enterprises, front and shell companies, partner with universities for access to IP, research data, technology, penetrate U.S. company supply chains. This is their strategy. Now, we are about to put $200 billion of American taxpayer money in more of that, in more of those activities. And you don't think that they're going to do all of that against us? They are. And so it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we have in place safeguards so they cannot keep doing this to us. What is the point of putting up $200 billion of American public taxpayer money on, on pursuing all this research if we're going to allow the Chinese to steal it? Nobody here wants them to steal it. And I know there's been improvements done in terms of upping the security. What I want you to understand is that this is not a minor security threat. This is the number one priority of Chinese intelligence. This is their number one priority. This is what all of their agencies and all of their government is geared towards doing. And we are going to put all this money in there in hope that the safeguards we've put in place are going to work. I hope they do. But what if they don't? What if a year from now we find out, and you're going to read an article two years from now, whatever, that says the Chinese have stolen a quarter, 25, 30 percent of the IP developed by the money that's been put forward in the bill that was passed. Then we're all going to feel pretty stupid around here. And that's the only thing I'm aiming at. All I'm asking in this amendment is that at least in the initial stages of this program, that the Director of National Intelligence, the DNI, the ODNI's office, and the FBI have an opportunity to review these grants to ensure 
that they do not have embedded in the place we're giving the money to a scientist, a researcher at one of these national labs or, 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 or that there isn't some shell company involved. Now, I know the argument. I've heard the argument against it from those who want to do the research. This is going to slow it down. It, it is. TSA slows down our ability to get on airplanes. Who wants to get rid of TSA? Cybersecurity slows down our ability to access our networks. But we need more of it, not less. Yes, security becomes burdensome. It slows things down. But I would rather do it slow or slower and own it than faster and have them steal it. And that's what this amendment does. I don't know what the opposition to it is, other than I understand that there are a lot that just want to get their hands on this money and they want to get going very quickly. And that's what they want to do, and that's great. That's what researchers want to do. They want to move fast. We need them to move fast. But our job is different. Our job is to see the problem holistically and understand, let's move as fast as we can without allowing the Chinese to steal it. So, look, I'm asking everyone to vote against this motion to table, because frankly, I think we, have, we expose ourselves to a vulnerability. We are placing the faith that this existing system we have and whatever new one we're starting up is going to be able to withstand and the, the force of the intelligence agencies of an entire nation state and their number one objective. And that is, how can we get our hands on whatever these $200 billion are helping to innovate? Senator from Washington.